that he may keep all of us, the entire community in this campus, staff, students, non-teaching staff, PTA, friends and well-wishers of our college, that he may keep us safe, that he may guide us during the course of this year so that we may discern at each moment his will. For this inaugural Eucharist, we have chosen this beautiful theme called to grow in wisdom and to be witnesses of Jesus. Let us ask the Lord to be with us throughout this year. This college is entrusted to St. Francis Xavier. Through the intercession of St. Francis Xavier, the patron of this college, through the intercession of St. Joseph Vaz, the patron of Archdiocese, and very especially through the powerful intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of the Church, the Mother of humankind, let us pray that he may, she may accompany all of us and protect us during this year, that in spite of all the restrictions, constraints, this year may be truly fruitful for all of us, staff, students, and all those associated with this college, that it may help us to grow in genuine wisdom and to be joyful witnesses of the values that Jesus brought in this world. In order to prepare ourselves for this Holy Eucharist, let us be conscious of our weaknesses and let's prepare ourselves to ask the Lord and one another humbly for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
O God, who have taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. I have something to tell you, elders. I am an elder myself and a witness to the sufferings of our Lord Jesus. And with you, I have a share in the glory that is to be revealed. Be the shepherds of the flock of God that is entrusted to you. Watch over it, not simply as a duty, but gladly, because God wants it, not for sordid money, but because you are eager to do it. Never be a dictator over anyone that is put in your charge. But be an example that the whole flock can follow. When the chief shepherd appears, you will be given crown of unfailing glory. The word of the Lord. Our response. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Proclaim the wonders of the world among all the peoples. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Our response. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Proclaim him. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Response. Proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the peoples. Give the Lord your fam you families of people. Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Response, proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the people. Proclaim to the nations, God is King. The world he made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Response, proclaim the wonders of the Lord among all the people. Kindly rise for the gospel acclamation.
his disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, uh, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you a friend, servants anymore because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I commission you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear fathers, representatives of the staff, of the students who are here partaking physically in this Holy Mass, but all the members of the staff, teaching, non-teaching, all the students, maybe some parents, members of the PTA, and all our friends who are participating in this Eucharist through the means of communication. The theme chosen for this inaugural Eucharist is called to wisdom, to grow in wisdom and to be witnesses of Jesus. This brings to my mind the story, a story which is connected with Tao philosophy. Taoism is a Chinese mystical philosophy. One young man one day went to a Tao philosopher who was sitting immersed in deep reflection, contemplation. And this young man posed a question to that Tao philosopher. He said, Master, teach me wisdom. But this Tao philosopher did not reply a word. The young man was disappointed, he came back, waited. After about one hour, he went back to the master and said, Master, teach me wisdom. And there was utter silence. The young man was completely disgusted. He came back, but he waited. In the afternoon, he went again to the philosopher and said, Master, teach me wisdom. And again, complete silence. The young man was completely disappointed, came out and sat in the sun under a tree. And after some time, this Tao philosopher got up and went to that young man and says, Young man, what do you want? And the young man made no, no secret about his disappointment. He said, Three times I came to you and asked you, you did not reply. But he says, What do you want? He says, I told you I want wisdom. But then the Tao philosopher said, but why are you sitting here? 
said, because you did not reply, I was disappointed. I thought of sitting here in the sun. But he said, why are you sitting here? He said, under this tree, under this beautiful shady tree. But he said, why are you, why this tree is here? He said, because it has not been cut. But he said, well, but why it has not been cut? Because it is useless for furniture. So he said, the tree is useless for furniture. And it yet, it is so beautiful. It gives you shade. He says, have you learned to wisdom? This tree is good. It's beautiful in itself. Though it is useless for furniture, Though it's useless maybe for firewood even, but in itself it is beautiful, it is good. Young man, have you learned wisdom? The wisdom, true wisdom tells us that everything that God created is good. Every being is good. The creation is beautiful. Every human person is good because God created it. And every element of creation, especially we humans, we reflect God's wisdom, God's love, God's goodness. And that's what all the religious traditions in some way or, or the other convey to us. That God imprinted his goodness on every element of creation, but most eminently on us human beings. The Bible tells us, right at the beginning in Genesis, that man was created in God's likeness. And that's our call, that's our mission of every human person to reflect God's love and goodness. We read in the scriptures in chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, one day one of his disciples, Philip, turns to the master and says, Master, show us the Father, and that's enough for us, show us your Father. And Jesus turns to Philip and says, Philip, I've been with you for so long and you still don't know me. The one who sees me sees the Father. I am the witness of the Father. I am reflecting the Father. And that's what the Gospel of today reminds us. Jesus telling us, his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Therefore remain in my love. And I'm going to show you the way also, tell you very clearly how you are to remain in my love. I have followed my father's commands and remain his, in his love. So you too remain in my love and I have called you for that. You have not chosen me, I have chosen you to be what? Not to be my servants, but to be my friends. That's our greatness, that we are called to be friends of Jesus. And Jesus says, you have to show that you are my friends by following my command. Only one, love one another as I have loved you. That's the challenge before us. In that lies all the wisdom. And how are we to love? How did Jesus love? There are at least three traits I would like to place before you in which Jesus showed his love. Jesus, first of all, cared for people. He cared for every person. He cared for little children. He cared for young people. He cared for the old, the sick, the marginalized, the poor, his enemies. He cared for everyone, the sinners. No one was excluded from his caring embrace. And how did he show his care? By being present to people, by appreciating them, by encouraging them by being sensitive to their needs. Secondly, Jesus reached out, served everyone. He said, I have not come to be served, but to serve. And he gave us a most touching example of washing of the feet. In the Jewish society, washing of the feet of the guests was the duty of the slaves, not of the servants. And that's why Peter reacts so strongly, he says, Master, you are the Son of God, you are falling at my feet and washing. And Jesus says, yes, Peter, if I don't wash you, and later in my name you don't continue the mission of service, you have nothing in me, in my life, in my mission. You want to be my friend, that's the only part, serve others, 
joyfully the way I serve. And thirdly, Jesus showed compassion. He was so compassionate. Compassionate towards the lepers. Today perhaps we are frightened of COVID positive people like they were frightened of the lepers. The lepers could not move about in the Jewish society. They had to shout, say, I'm a leper. They had to remain far away. And one day one such leper comes to Jesus and says, Master, if you wish you can make me clean. He was far away. Jesus could have told him, remain there only, I heal you from them. Please don't come, I may get your leprosy. No, Jesus goes to him, touches him, speaks to him. And he says, I care for you, I want you to be healed. Jesus cared for the crowds. We know once large crowds were there listening to the word of Jesus. It was late and the disciples of Jesus come and says, Master, send them away. It is late in the day and we don't have enough food stuff send them away and Jesus says you give them something to eat and they said we we hardly have anything few sandwiches they won't be enough and he said bring what you have your five loaves two fish and Jesus trains them in his school of being compassionate to others not only they are able to share but each one of them twelve of them have a basket when we share with others, when we are compassionate to others, we have nothing to worry, we will never run short. Each one of them have a basket full because they chose to share what they had. And that's the challenge before us. To be caring like Jesus, to be ready to serve joyfully like Jesus, to show compassion, understanding for others like Jesus. And that's what the first reading says, Saint Paul, Saint Peter, of course, he writes to the elders, but what he says holds good to all of us. Because in some way or the other, staff members, students, non-teaching staff, members of the PTA, each one of us has an impact on the life of others. And what does St. Peter say in his letter? He says, shepherd the flock that is entrusted to your care. All of us, every disciple of Jesus, in some way or the other, shares in the shepherding ministry of Jesus. Even we students, we have one another whom we have to shepherd. At home maybe we have younger siblings whom we have to shepherd. What does it mean? He says take care, care for the people around you. Be caring persons, that's what St. Peter says, like Jesus, who cared for everyone, who took notice of everyone, especially of those who are neglected, of those who are marginalized. Peter says care for people. And how are we to care? He said, not under compulsion, but willingly. Do it willingly. Not because I'm compelled. Yes, I'm a teacher. I must care. Yes. But he says, don't do it under compulsion. Do it willingly, joyfully. He says, not for shameful gain. Yes, because I'm going to get a salary or because I'm going to get something out of it. He says, eagerly, enthusiastically, give your best when you care for me. And finally, he says, not domineering. Don't be bosses, because I chose not to be a boss. I chose to be a servant. You do it, be examples to the flock. In other words, St. Peter says, walk the talk, as Jesus says. Let your preaching, let your witnessing be by your life, by the silent and yet powerful testimony of your life. My dear friends, you as students, you are here, beginning a new academic year in which you are surely going to grow not only in knowledge, and, but also in wisdom. And all our knowledge, all our wisdom must lead us to be better persons. To be persons with these attitudes of caring, of readiness to serve. Have this behavior, have these values which lead us to be compassionate, to be caring, to reach out in joyful service. And that's what also this pandemic challenges to be. I would like to highlight two features of the pandemic experience. The entire one important feature that we must learn to pick up from this pandemic experience is the entire humankind and creation is interrelated, interdependent. We realize how dependent we are. All the barriers of countries, of religions, of languages are not recognized by this virus. They are interdependent. 
not only humankind is interdependent, the entire creation, the environment, we are all interdependent and therefore we have to care for one another irrespective of any type of distinctions that we have had in the past. The second, this COVID-19, with all its devastating power, also brings out the noblest in us. And we have seen this. We have seen when there was this exodus of migrants, there were such lovely stories of people reaching out, reaching out to the migrants, irrespective of all the barriers of language, of religion, of creed, of culture, of race, people reached out to one another. Beautiful acts of reaching out. We have also seen when those migrants were going with all the difficulties with bags and so on with their trunks, yet there were acts of courage. They themselves were facing all sorts of constraints, reaching out to one another. Such beautiful stories. We have also seen such beautiful, incredible stories of bravery among the COVID-19 warriors. Just a few days back, I saw on the TV one teacher, I think he was a lecturer in Calcutta, I forget the name, I just saw him passing on the television. He was a, he was a victim of COVID-19 and his lungs were not functioning and they needed a very expensive machinery to let him survive. And his students in Calcutta collected six lakhs of rupees for their teacher. Why did they do that? They said, he was such a caring teacher. We have not forgotten him. Now he needs our care. They went round online collecting money and they collected six lakhs and gave to that teacher to buy that machinery. He survived today. He said, I'm so grateful to my students because he was a caring teacher. The students did not forget. They have learned, they have picked up this attitude in the school of their lecturer's lifestyle. They became caring. They said, that's the time for us. In April 2020, the students of IIT in Delhi, they did something beautiful. What did they do? They realized that the big shop pullers in their campus had no jobs that they had no income, they were passing through difficulties. And one of the students of fourth year, civil engineering student, took the initiative of collecting money from among the students and gave it to all those rickshaw pullers, those who pull rickshaws, because they realized we must care for them. They care for us during the year, now they are jobless, they are facing financial difficulties, we must do something. What a beautiful thing. I think this pandemic experience teaches us to bring out the best in us, the noblest in us. And therefore, in spite of all the restrictions that we will be facing during the course of this year, I was saying uncertainty is the only certain thing in this period of pandemic. And yet, we are not so uncertain because we know who guides the future. We don't know what the future holds for us, but we know who holds the future and he cares for us. And in today's gospel, Jesus tells us, if you do this, you will always be joyful. We may have our worries, we may have our anxieties, we may have our challenges, but we'll be deep down happy if we witness to the values of Jesus. If we are persons who care for one another, who encourage, who appreciate, who understand, who reach out in joyful service, who are compassionate, kind, especially to those maybe who hurt us, who get on our nerves. And secondly, Jesus says, not only you will be joyful, but whatever you ask my Father, it will be granted to you. Because you have witness to my values. He gives us this assurance that the Father will grant to us whatever we ask Him, only if we choose to be His friends. If we choose to walk the path that Jesus showed us. Let us entrust this entire year to the Lord. One day when we have passed through this crucible of uncertainty, maybe we'll realize that it was the best period in our journey of life. That we have all grown. Crisis can be a moment of growth if we know to face it with courage, with confidence, with serenity. Let us entrust this year to the Lord and pray that it may be truly fruitful for all of us. 
staff, students, all associated with this campus of St. Xavier's College, that we may grow together in genuine wisdom and that we may be empowered to witness to the values that Jesus brought in this world. Because if we are to face the challenges in this unprecedented situation, we have to be rooted in our faith. And therefore, let us recite together the I believe, asking the Lord to help all of us during this year to have a genuine vision of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, if we are to witness to the faith that we have just professed and follow Jesus faithfully, loyally throughout this day, this year, we need the strength of God's grace. Let us now turn to Him and place our petitions before Him in humility and trust. For our Pope, bishops, especially our Archbishop, Philip Neri Ferron, and priests, that during this pandemic, may they strengthen their faith and the faith of their flock, and reach out to their sheep in this moment of crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. responsibly and bear lasting fruits. Let us pray to the Lord. some of our needs, some of our longings, 
there is so much more each one of us would like to pray for. We place before you, Lord, all that is deep down in our hearts from the silence of our lives. Look mercifully on our prayers, and if it be your will, in your goodness, grant them to us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer our gifts, let us sing the hymn, Blessed are you, Lord, be
sending down your spirit upon them like the new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those born to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. As we receive the Lord into our hearts, let us sing the hymn as the dear Lord.
May the outpouring of the Holy Spirit cleanse our hearts, O Lord, fill our lives with true wisdom, and make them fruitful by the inner sprinkling of His dew. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Your grace, that really this would have been a different kind of function in normal circumstances. But due to the times that we are facing, we have a truncated kind of a inauguration of the new you know, uh, academic year. So, Paul, along with my staff, both teaching and non teaching, my priests were here working with us in this house, in this college. On behalf of our students who are here not here today, but I think they are participating, they are united with us at this very moment through the social media. I welcome your grace in our midst. And we thank you on behalf of everyone for your beautiful message that you have given us, for breaking the world in such a way that you brought to us what God wants us to do. He has loved us and he calls on us to love each other and more than that, to love our students. We are here, my dear teachers, because of the students. Just as Jesus came into the world for our sake, he has put each one of us in this institution for the sake of our students. Just as he loved us, we are called to love our students, to be caring, to be concerned, to be creative, so that we help our students to be better persons, not only simply knowledgeable people, but students who have grown up with the right values of life. So may your grace, we welcome you, and at the same time, we thank you for being here and celebrating this Mass with us and for us. Once again, thank you for your place. Just one word before I impart the final blessing. I would like to wish all of you, I know physically only a few representatives are here, but I am aware that many students, staff are following, partaking in this Mass through the media of communication. Maybe many are at home also following this Mass. I would like to wish all of you, the entire community in this St. Xavier's College campus, a truly fruitful year. Maybe a year different from the ones we were used to. But we are a community of faith. In this campus there may be staff, students belonging to various religious traditions. But we are all rooted in our faith. And our faith gives us the inner strength, the serenity to face situations as they come, remaining as far as possible unruffled. And that's what the Tao philosopher wanted to teach that young man, to learn to face silence, to learn to face lack of response, to learn to face situations as they come with serenity, with inner peace and strength. As I wish all of you, I would like to remember the various achievements that you have had last year. Not only in the inaugural function, we hear about the brilliant results and all this year is different. Let us enjoy this difference. Your results, I'm sure, will come in due course of time. But all of you, staff and students, have so many achievements last year. Maybe we have not had a report and so on, but I can understand. So much good must have happened last year. I congratulate all of you. The administrator, I remember with gratitude, Father Zeferino de Souza, who was the administrator of college for two years, is at home, victim of an accident. Let's pray for his speedy recovery. I thank him for his dedicated services. 
We have here the new administrator, Father Tony Salema. New and yet not so new. He was here before. Most of you, except maybe a few students, may not know him. I welcome him. Most of the fathers were here. No? A little bit on the new avatar, but he was there. All of you were here. I wish you all the best, the principal, the staff members, the students. You know, St. Mother Teresa used to say, all that I want to do in my life is to be like a little blend sit in God's hands. Let him write whatever he wants. And that's what I would wish for all of us, for all of you in this campus, that all of you may be beautiful pencils in God's hands. That in these unprecedented times, he may write to you and me whatever he wants to write. What, what I would invite you to do is to promote, to nurture a culture of the gospel reminded us. A culture of loving care for one another. A culture of appreciation. A culture of encouragement. A culture of compassion. A culture of joyful, humble service. So that this campus becomes ever more a well-knit family. The members of which are human and humane. Whatever may be our differences, whatever may be things that mark us in different religious traditions, with different streams which we are studying, whatever that may be, let us promote an environment of genuine family spirit where we care for one another and care that is shown in concrete action. Let's walk the talk. Be in personal touch with one another. We have tremendous means of communication that even in these times where we have to physically distance ourselves, we can be socially, emotionally very close to one another. Let us be such caring persons and let these unprecedented times bring out the best in you, the noblest in you. I gave you some examples. But if you go through the media, you see so many beautiful things happening. Unfortunately, unfortunately sometimes the media drives on negative things. But there are so many beautiful things happening. As much as every day there are people tested positive, there is perhaps a similar number, or greater number of people who are recovering. Let us be optimist, realist, but optimist. And that's what I wish for all of you through the intercession of our Heavenly Mother, St. Francis Xavier, the patron of this college and campus, St. Joseph Mars, the patron of our archdiocese. We accompany you and may this year be a truly fruitful year for all of you and for all of us. Kindly rise for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. I forgot to express my appreciation and to thank all of you, fathers, staff members, students who prepared this meaningful liturgy, for our lovely singers, for your meaningful singing, and the organist, thank you very much. God bless you. Have a nice day. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve one another. Thank you, Lord.